Do you have an old portable DVD player like this one and you're trying to figure out what to do with it? Uh, this is my old uh, Sony DVP FX930. And uh, I got this one at a thrift store a few years ago and it's still running strong. Uh, plays really well. And um, I, I was looking at it closely a couple of days ago and I noticed that it has a couple of ports for video input and output and one for audio input and output. And it got me thinking, yeah, I know that I can uh, use this one to play DVDs, but can I use it to input uh, or to watch Netflix or streaming services using an old streaming device? And uh, I figured out a way to do it. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use something like this, uh, something that has an analog input so you can watch uh, streaming services and directly with your old portable DVD player. So for this video, I'm gonna use uh, this old Apple TV. And this is, I believe, the second generation Apple TV that came out, I believe, in 2013. So already 10 years old, still works really well though. So I have, uh, I already have a new one, so I figured out I might as well find a way to use this old one. Um, and so you can see the, the outputs of this device or this streaming device, it does have only HDMI output here. Um, so for this video, I'm gonna show you how to connect from HDMI to connect it to an analog device like this one. Uh, later in the video, I'm gonna show you how to do it with a device that doesn't have an HDMI connection or HDMI output. Uh, I'll save that for later in the video. So this is what you're gonna need. Uh, you're gonna need, of course, your portable DVD player, your uh, audio video source, uh, so the Apple TV, or you can also use a uh, Roku device, uh, anything that has an HDMI output. And uh, you're also gonna need one of these guys. And this is a, a mini HDMI to AV converter. So I think I've shown this one in one of my past videos. It's a very simple and cheap device that you can find on Amazon or eBay. And by the way, I'll put, um, I'll put links to all the products that I show in this video in the, the description. Uh, but anyways, it transforms an HDMI or digital signal into analog or RCA connections. Uh, so again, you can find it for really, really affordable prices online. So I'll show you how to connect this. Uh, essentially, you're gonna need, of course, an HDMI cable to connect it to your Apple TV. And um, uh, in this situation, the shorter the better. Uh, so I found this one, I think it's a single footer on Amazon. Again, I'll put a link in the description. Connect it to your digital to analog converter and the other side goes to your Apple TV. Now, HDMI output. So once you have that connected, you're gonna have to connect, of course, your analog signal, uh, your RCA cables from here into your portable DVD player. Now this may be the uh, most challenging part of the video to find an actual cable where you can connect your video source into this video input uh, port in your DVD player. This is particularly important in Sony devices because they tend to use proprietary cables uh, to connect to external devices. So um, my recommendation is uh, try to see if you find something in your uh, cable box uh, or your cable collection to, to see if uh, you can connect this to, um, to this RCA jack uh, and see if it works. Try different ports, different uh, cables. Um, in, in my situation, I was actually able to do it using this cable right here. This is a very old cable that I got in one of my first portable or first point and shoot cameras that I ever got. It was a photo camera, but it did have the ability to connect to external devices using this video cable. And uh, as you can see, it's a mono um, uh, audio cable, and it has the standard audio or kind of like a audio jack in the other side, but it, it does transmit the video signal. And uh, this one actually worked. Uh, but again, make sure that you have a cable that actually works with your DVD player. You may want to go into either Amazon or eBay and type in your the part number or the model of your DVD player and uh, see if it's, if it's compatible with that actual video cable. But anyways, what I'll do and uh, the, what I figured out in this cable is actually I have to use this black uh, end, a black connection instead of the yellow one 
for the video source. So uh, according to the Sony connections inside, the video is connected to this black port. So I connected the black uh, jack into this yellow port, like that. So in my situation, it's not yellow to yellow, it's actually black to yellow. And again, it may vary according to your model of DVD player. So try uh, testing a couple of different things, you know, connect it first to the yellow, or in some cases, this one comes with um, a third cable or a third connection, a red one or white one. Try connecting that one to the video source and see if it works. If not, again, go online and try to find one that works. And the other end goes to your video input. Just like that. Now, as you can see from my DVD player, this portable DVD player has separate signals or separate connections, one for video and one for audio. So the audio one is a little bit easier. Uh, you're just gonna connect uh, this uh, two cable or two, these two connections, the red and white, left and right channels into here. And to do that, you're gonna use this cable that is m way more widely available. You can find these cables anywhere in any electronic store out there. So don't worry about this one, just buy whatever you find at the store. You maybe already have one of these ones out there somewhere. So what you do is you turn in red to red, white to white, do those connections. And the other connection is of course a, a this jack, I think it's, they call it the TRS connection, and that goes into your audio input port of your DVD player. Oops. And one more thing that you have to take care of with this uh, HDMI to analog converter is that it's actually it's actually powered. So uh, your your adapter is going to come in with a power cable or USB power cable like this one. Uh, so you just plug it into the side, and the other end is just a standard USB connection. So you can plug it in either to your computer or use a power adapter to plug it into the wall. Uh, in my case, to avoid plugging in something else to the wall, I'm just going to use this um, uh, external and portable battery pack from Anchor, and this one works just fine too. So you plug it in and turn it on. And now your uh, HDMI to analog converter is powered and ready to go. So I've actually already connected the, the DVD player to, to the power cord just to avoid using the, the battery. And uh, you should be ready to go. So just turn on your DVD player. By the way, I also have the, the remote for the uh, Apple TV. So uh, turn on your DVD player, and of course the default is gonna be to read the actual disc inside, or the DVD, uh, from inside the DVD player. So what you wanna do is, in my DVD player, there's a button right here on the side of the screen that says input. And that's gonna be to select the input source. So if you press that button once, it's gonna take you to the input of the, that we just plugged in into the Apple TV. So now it's working using the Apple TV. And as you can see, it looks really good. Of course, it's not gonna be in super high definition and 4K or even in 1080p. I believe this DVD is on standard definition. So I think it's on 480p, but it looks fine. Uh, you can watch your movies just fine on this. And uh, again, here's the remote. Let's go ahead and uh, play around with it. Let's see if we can go to Apple TV and find something to play just for, for testing it out. Um, there it is, we can watch Ted Lasso if you want. And again, you can use it with just a remote for the Apple TV. There you go, Ted Lasso, and you can watch all your shows. And the sound is also uh, coming in from the audio cables. And uh, one more thing is that the, uh, you can also use your headphone jack here to connect it to your DVD player. That will work, work just fine. So that, yeah, that's how you connect your uh, Apple TV to your uh, older DVD player. And like I mentioned before, uh, there is also a way to connect uh, even older devices that don't have uh, HDMI uh, outputs into this uh, DVD player. And actually it's gonna be, it's gonna be 
uh, a little bit simpler. It's gonna be a little bit simpler, but also you're gonna need a different cable. So I'll show you how to do that next. So for that example, I'm gonna use this even older Roku 2. This is a second generation Roku that I bought. I can't even remember when I bought this, probably 2011 or 2012. This is one of the first ones. So this is the XD and I'll show you how it looks in the back. Let me see if it will focus there. There you go. So it, this one does have an HDMI actually, so you can use it the same way as I showed you before, but it also has the option of AV out, and this is actually an analog connection. So in this case, you're not gonna need that HDMI to analog uh, adapter or converter, uh, and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, first, of course, let's go ahead and power this one. This one's plugged into the wall. And uh, what you'll need is this. You're gonna need, uh, again, a similar cable that I showed you before. This is the kind that you can find pretty much in any um, electronic store. Just your RCA in one side and your uh, the TRS connection in the other. And what I've done is I've hooked in this, I'm not sure how you call this devices, I guess the couplers or, I'm not sure, but I'll put a link in the description to all the cables and adapters that I uh, show you in this video in the description. So you plug it in, in like that at the end of the, uh, the um, RCA connections. And uh, this jack is gonna go here to the AV out of your old Roku device. Plug it in like that. So the other ends of the, of the connections are gonna go, as you may guess, to the exact same cables as you had before. So for example, the, the video cable that I showed you before that was on this uh, black connection instead of the yellow one, it's gonna go to the, the yellow connection for video. And this one, as, you, as I showed you before, is connected to the video input right here. And the red and white, or the white and red connections are gonna go to your audio cable that I also showed you before. Sorry, everything is getting a little tangled here, but uh, it will work at the end. Um, so that you line up uh, white to white and red to red. And of course that one's connected to your audio input right there. And again, you're now connected directly without any adapter to your Roku, from your Roku, to your DVD player and uh, it will work the exact same way. So uh, turn on your DVD player. And I have the original remote for the Roku here too. Again, it's gonna default to the, to read the DVD. Press your input button and there it is. There is your Roku connected to your old portable DVD player. So you can watch Netflix, you can watch YouTube and you have a remote for it, then it works just fine. And that's it, that's the, the test that I wanted to show you how to do that. And again, it's gonna work, of course, if your old portable DVD player has that video and audio input jacks to the side. You may have an, a different type of model that has maybe a single input um, that you're gonna have to, to kind of uh, try out different things and different cables or you may have an actual full-sized RCA connections on the side, which, which will actually make it a little bit easier to find those cables. That will be the ideas, ideal situation. But I wanted to show you how to do it with uh, the one that I have. And lastly, I wanted to also talk a little bit about why you may want to do this. Uh, in 2023, where there's so many new devices, there's the new iPads, the new high-definition 4K TVs, why in the world would you want to use and a DVD player from 20 years ago that is in standard definition uh, and connected to uh, um, a streaming service box like this one. Well, uh, in my philosophy is, I guess, is that if the products or the devices still work, might as well use them. That's the main reason why you will want to do this. Uh, you could go ahead and just turn this over to either the thrift store or donate it to somebody else. But more and more likely, this is probably gonna end up in a landfill. And uh, uh, if you wanna avoid that, if you wanna help with the uh, uh, environmental cost of doing that, you might as well find a, um, a function for older devices like this one. 
Uh, again, it's, it's in standard definition, but you can still watch movies just fine, uh, especially with this uh, with this uh, screen. If you have it in front of you, it, it's fine. You can see the watch the movie just fine. You can read the subtitles. Everything looks just fine. So uh, that's the the main thing. You know, just keep on using the devices that you have instead of just buying the newer stuff. Buy and keep uh, keep on buying the new stuff that you don't really need. And the uh, second function for all this is also the the fact that I, if you don't have a TV near you, uh, you know, and if you're in a room where, uh, like in a bedroom or in, in an office where you actually don't have a, a TV available or you don't want to bring your iPad or something, uh, for example, in, in, in this room that I use it, I don't have a TV and I actually use this DVD player to watch my old DVDs on uh, when I'm sitting on the couch. And I might as well figure out a way to use it to watch some Netflix or watch some YouTube as well. So it serves a double purpose here to use um, a DVD player or to watch my DVDs and to watch uh, other uh, streaming services as well. So that's my, uh, my video about how to connect uh, your old or to still use your old DVD player or portable DVD player. Let me know what you think in the description. How do you use your older electronics uh, now in 2023? What do you do with them? Uh, let me know. We'd love to hear your input about that. Thank you for watching and uh, see you later. Bye-bye.